If you're a real estate investor in New Jersey, you may have found that it's next to impossible to hit the cash flow numbers you've been accustomed to. If that's your situation, you're going to want to watch this show all the way to the end. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm James Wise. This is Holton Wise TV. This is where I help people like you start, build, or grow your real estate portfolios, right? And I know a lot of you guys out there in New Jersey, man, you're unable to hit the cash flow numbers you've become accustomed to, right? Pricing is up all over the country, but specifically markets like New Jersey. It's incredibly hard to find low-cost cash flow producing assets. The taxation, it's out of control, right? So a lot of you are doing what my client R Money is doing. You guys are looking out of state. You're looking to some cheaper markets, right? Some Midwestern markets where the price points are much lower, the price to rent ratios are much higher, right? Now my team, we're out here in Cleveland, Ohio. I've sold over $200 million worth of uh, <clears throat> Uh, rental real estate like this, like what you're about to see in today's show, okay? We run the largest scattered site rental portfolio in the area. We help you guys, people like you from New Jersey, people like Our Money, invest here in this cheap market, and we are your boots on the ground team. Now, Our Money, this is a property that you had sent me, okay? This is a duplex you had sent me, and you asked me various questions, uh, which I'll tap into here shortly when we go into the numbers. One other question, too, that I just want to hit up real quick before we even take a deep dive into the numbers is you sent me another one, 3449 Aaron. I'll do that video for you. Uh, well, you'll get that video uh probably at the same time I'm sending this to you, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but I've reviewed both of those properties. I've reviewed the numbers on both of those properties. And you had said, if I was only going to buy one, which one would I buy? And in my opinion, I don't think it really matters, dude. It's six to one, half dozen to the other. They're essentially the same property, same type of neighborhood. I mean, you know, you put in offers on both of them, whichever one you lock up. Uh, maybe you lock them both up. We check out the inspections and whichever one uh, appears to be in the better current condition. That's probably the one I would go with, right? If you're looking at these two properties on a, a super long-term ownership experience, I really don't think it's going to matter, uh, matter one way or the other. So uh, let me hit up a quick commercial break. I'll pull up the property and we will run the numbers. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's take a look at the numbers on this particular property, okay? 2978 West 32nd, Cleveland 44113. Two days on the market. Priced at $95,000. I think $95,000 is the minimum you're going to need to pay to take this one down. We are getting multiple offers on pretty much all Cleveland multifamily properties. This one is going to be no different. It appears to be in pretty nice shape, too. I like that it's got the vinyl siding, by the way. Vinyl siding is great, especially because uh, all these homes in Cleveland built well before 1978, so you can have potential lead-based paint issues, right? We have two tenants already in there. Uh, they're both paying below market rent, right? We're getting a total of $1,100, $550 each unit, long-term month-to-month -month tenants. I see no reason why they wouldn't be long-term, though, right? Their rent's super-duper cheap, right? This looks like somebody's grandma lives in this one. Those, uh, you know, all those, like, old-school, dated-looking fixtures. That's great. She keeps a really uh, really clean unit, though. This looks like a, a hell of a tenant, man. This looks like somebody who you'd want to be your tenant, right? Here's the other unit, also looking like it's in pretty good shape, right? Nothing, like, uh, amazing, but, you know, just decently clean units. Got a newer hot water tank right there. Another newer hot water tank right there. Those are good, right? Brand new furnaces too, right? These uh, these big ticket items, right? This is a lot of savings uh, for the long haul, right? Those two furnaces, they're going to last probably another 30 years, right? It's 3K a pop. Those two hot water tanks, they're probably going to last another 15 years, right? That is 1K a pop, right? It's a pretty damn nice property. Now, as far as the actual market rents go, they're actually much higher too. 
850 and 750 is what we should be getting in rent, right? Because one of those units is actually a 3-1, the other is a 2-1, right? So that'd be 1600 a month, 19200 a year. Now, even though, even though the hot water tanks are new, the furnaces are new, we still are going to save $960 a year for CapEx. We're going to, you know, pretend you're not really getting that money. Yes, it's coming back to you, but you're going to hold that, right? Hold that in another account. Don't consider that your cash flow, right? Because eventually you're going to have to replace those things and you're going to have to pay that money. So over the long haul, though, this should, in my opinion, have an NOI of 9762 And if you're lucky enough to pick it up at 95 k you only need to put down 23750 Bank kicks in 71 That'd be a 26% cash-on-cash return projection if you got those tenants up to market rate. Could you get them up to market rate uh, without turning them over? Yes, it's possible. Is it guaranteed? No, of course not, dude. They're both only paying friggin' 550 right now. My advice, do it slowly. You look like you got two great, clean, long-term tenants. In my opinion, you don't want them going anywhere, right? You want to keep them in there because you're going to have to do a five to $10,000 unit turn uh, to get them spruced up, to get them ready for market rent if you lose both these people, right? So maybe the first year you keep the rent the same. Then the second year you go up. You go up 50, another 50, another 50. As for the neighborhood, right? This is what I would consider to be a D-grade neighborhood. It's very important you understand that. This is a D-grade neighborhood. Now, as far as uh, nicer neighborhoods, right? Like this over here, this is Tremont, okay? Tremont, but Tremont doesn't get really nice to like way up here, right? So, <clears throat> like... Here is the map. Like, this is technically where Tremont starts, but it's like the further up you go is really nice. Same thing with Ohio City, right? So this is very much a D-grade neighborhood. You do have to understand that's a D-grade neighborhood. In my opinion, D-grade neighborhoods like this, they work really well with Section 8 tenants, right? Because the biggest risk of a D-grade neighborhood is your tenants not being able to pay rent. However, in this particular property, we appear to have really good tenants. You can just kind of tell based on how nice they treat their unit, right? So it doesn't look like they're missing payments. It doesn't look like they're jacking the house up, right? So those are some risks that you get with D-grade assets that appears we might not have in this particular property. So all the more reason you don't get blinded by that 26% projection, right? And you try to keep those tenants in there. If you do turn one over in your efforts uh, to, to get it up to market rent or just to uh, you know, just as an owner of a property because, you know, nobody lives in your house forever. That's just not how this game works. If that happens, you want to go Section 8, right? Very important you go Section 8 because you are definitely not getting, like, the ultra-trendy, high credit score tenants that you would receive in Tremont. Not over here. Definitely a D-grade neighborhood, but an absolute... Nice investment, in my opinion, would be a solid buy. Again, 95K is the minimum I think you need to offer. I guarantee you there's going to be multiple bids on this one. You may want to consider going above list price. I'll leave that to you to tell me how high above list price you really want to go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.